Apicultural equipment promoted for development in Guinea is designed to be appropriate for the economic and ecological conditions found in rural areas. For instance, 55-gallon drums used for the transport of oil are recycled to process the products harvested from the Kenya top bar hives, shown on the right. The units on the left are appropriate tech wax melters, note the open fire chambers occupying the lower portions of the devices, and those at center are honey settling storage containers, note the strainers on top. If the metals with which honey comes into contact are not properly treated, the acids in the honey will corrode the metals and the honey will take on an off flavor. Aluminum paint which is used to treat the tanks to prevent this is difficult to obtain and very expensive. I suggested that coating the inside of the tanks with wax, as is sometimes done in Canada, might be worth trying, and the technicians of FAPI, that is, the Fédération des Apicultures de Guinée, seemed receptive and committed to testing the idea. Honey is harvested from the top bar hives by crushing the combs, and as a consequence, produces a relatively large amount of wax. Wax so harvested can be refined using solar wax melters, demonstrated here by Mamadou Yaya Diallo, the president of the Fédération des Apicultures de Guinée. As the wax liquefies in the hot tropical sun, it is filtered through metal screening and runs into a collection trough. At night, or when the weather is cool, the filtered wax solidifies into ingots, which may be sold or worked up into a variety of value-added products, such as cosmetics or candles. The defensive nature of the African races of bees requires that, when inspecting colonies, sturdy personal protective equipment should be worn, or at least kept very handy. Heavy manipulations are usually conducted at night, when the bees are cooler and less likely to fly from the combs. However, more bees will be in the hive in the evening, and if only light manipulations are on the docket, hive revisions can be carried out during daylight hours, when a lighter bee jacket may be more comfortable. Nonetheless, coveralls should be kept close at hand in case emergencies develop. As elsewhere, smokers are used to blow cool fumes into the hives. The smoke induces the bees to eat honey, making them less likely to fly from the combs and sting. It can also be used to mask the smell of the beekeeper or to cover the scent of alarm pheromone if one does get stung. Here, Dian Bobo Diallo prepares to open the top bar hive. Notice how he taps the bars with the machete he is using as a hive tool. Bobo is tapping the, tapping the uh, top bars to see which of the hot top bars are empty so that he knows more or less where to start opening. See how the bees have constructed their comb along the length of the top bar in a manner that allows it to be withdrawn from the hive? Let's step back a second and take a look at the basic design of these top bars with Mamadou Wuri So, who acted as translator for me during much of my time in Guinea. Here you can see the cuneiform shape of the um, of the uh, bottom of the uh, top bars that they use, forming a nice a nice ridge which the uh, bees will use as a uh, as a guide for their combs. And when the combs are constructed therefrom, there will be a bee space in between the faces of the two combs. And this is my faithful sidekick, Wuri. Say hello, Wuri. Hello, Mr. Kornat. <laughs> Thank you, Wuri. Although the owner, Modi Bobakar C, demonstrated admirable courage and resourcefulness in constructing top bar hives solely from having seen an example, the varying widths of the top bars shown here indicate that these essential features of the top bars had not been conveyed to him. The proper width of top bars for African races of bees is 3.2 centimeters, and a central guide is necessary along the bottom to ensure proper orientation of comb. Otherwise, bees can build comb across the gaps between the bars, preventing their removal. Hung in the tree in the background can be seen a traditional cylindrical hive, which, like top bar hives, are set out as the dearth period ends in the hopes of attracting a passing swarm of honeybees. Here, Mamadou Wuriso and Abdurrahman Diallo, both working with the Fédération d'Apiculture de Guinée, stand near a Kenya top bar hive placed in a nicely shaded apiary. The apiaries in Guinea were generally well situated, away from compounds, animal enclosures, and roadways, and in shady areas which would keep the hives cooler in an environment where otherwise the bees would have to spend considerably more effort in ventilating and bringing in water to assist in the evaporative cooling of the hives. Note the crossbars attached to the hives to allow the hives to be hung from trees or posts. Hanging hives decreases the risk from bush fires that are regularly set to renew forage or clear land for planting, and provide some protection from ants, which can be further protected by banding the ropes or wires from which the hives depend with used motor oil or sheep's wool, which ants do not like to cross. I personally prefer to put such supports along the length of the hive, like stretcher handles, because this facilitates carrying heavy hives and gives one a place to set combs temporarily removed from the hives. In Guinea, most of the top bar hives are constructed with the entrance at one end, which is also typical of traditional hives there. 
Here, from left to right, OIC agricultural extensionist Amadou Pedi Diallo, myself, and Mamadou Bailo Kabi, president of a beekeeping cooperative in the village of Busura, discuss the relative merits of this configuration. Bees will tend to store their honey on the side opposite from an entrance positioned at one end of a hive, thus allowing them to more easily protect their stores from wasps and other honeybees which may try to rob their colony. This top bar hive in BC rather than Guinea shows the stretcher handles I mentioned earlier. Incorporating the entrance along one side instead of at an end may allow the bees to more easily ventilate the hive to cool it and to cure honey. The bees will tend to distribute their honey equally at both ends of the hive in that configuration and this can make the beekeepers work easier as honey can be collected from only one end of the hive allowing the bees to keep the honey at the opposite end. Now let's take a quick look inside the hive. <laughs> you see how the bees like to clump together in a chain? Huh? It's hard to see, but there's all the different stages. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's in different stages. You can see them? Yeah, I can see them inside. Yeah. Notice that if one smokes one's skin in bee suit, it is possible to work even nasty African bees without gloves, but keep them nearby just in case. <laughs> 